Valerie, have you been here the whole time? It's been months since our last video. You've just been saying the same thing for two months? Wow. Amazing. So today, we're going to be talking about the buck boost converter in continuous conduction mode and assuming steady state average. Thank you, Valerie. And here you can see we have the topology already set up and we have our three components, active switch, passive switch, and our inductor. And they've moved around for the different configurations. This is for the buck boost. And based on its name, you may guess that it can both buck, so decrease the voltage and boost, so increase the voltage relative to the input voltage. And one thing that we need to remember is that this diode is actually going in the opposite direction of the other ones. And this means that our output voltage is actually going to be flipped. The polarity will be flipped from before. So we'll have a negative polarity, reverse polarity at the output. Here we have our same setup. When the switch is on, the switch is our active switch. So that means that our switch here, this will be on, right? And since this is positive, we're going to have current going through this direction into the inductor this way, going downward. If you believe what we said about this being reverse biased, reverse polarity, then this will be positive, negative, and actually current will be flowing in this direction, and which means that current will be coming out of the capacitor. And remember, if we're in steady state average, this average capacitor voltage is going to be the same, constant, the average value. It's going to be like that. Okay? And we can just check the polarity. This voltage here is going to be negative, right, below zero, and this polarity is the same as Vn. So if we look at that, and we look at this diode, this voltage is much higher than this, which means it's blocking, so no current will flow. Now let's look at the case when the active switch is off. So here we're open, nothing's flowing, but we have this inductor, and we're assuming CCM, continuous conduction mode, which means that current must be flowing through the inductor. So current has to go this way. It can't flow this way, because we have this break, so it has to go in the other direction. So we know it's going to go this way. It's actually going to go into this capacitor through this resistor, which matches our reverse polarity. And it has to come back this way. So we have to have current going back through the diode. If we look at the direction of the diode, this matches that flowing direction going from current flowing from right to left. So this is the correct diagram for when the switch is off. Now let's look at the current waveform. The current through the inductor is our most important waveform. So when we have the switches on, this is the period between zero and dt. What is going to be, what is the slope here? If we look at our inductor, we see that the voltage over this inductor during this, when the switch is on, is Vn. So we can do some math and figure out that the slope here, increasing rate, is going to be Vn over L, right? The value of the inductance. What about when during this phase, when this active switch is off. If we look here, we see the voltage over the inductor during this phase is actually negative V out. Right? So this is V out, this value, and it's below zero. So it's going to be negative V out. Negative V out over L. Okay? This is the average value. Okay? So, now we can use these two relations to derive an equation that relates the input, sorry, output voltage, input voltage relative to D, the duty ratio. We know that from here, if we go up and then we go back down, we have to go back to zero because we've assumed that we're in steady state average. We have to come back to the same point. So the overall change in current over this whole period has to be zero. So let's look first at this, the current change during the first phase, so we would see that that would be equal to the slope times this time difference. It's going to be Vn over L times dt. And then we have to add this period, the amount of current change during this period. So it would be plus the current change, which is going to be negative V out, the average V out, 
over L. And then this period is D minus 1, all right, 1 minus D times T. So 1 minus D times T. Automatically, we can get rid of some values here. Our T's and our L values. And we get a very nice equation. We can, we're going to move this over to this side. So we're going to get V out, the average value, over the capacitor times 1 minus D is equal to V in times D. Simple. So let's just rewrite it so that we have it in terms of V in. So V in is going to be equal to the average value of V out times 1 minus D over D. So just move this D over here and flip it. So here's one version of the relationship. And then let's write it the other way as well. So let's put it in terms of V out, average value V out. You just flip it around and we get is equal to V in times D, one minus D. So here is the same equation just written, depends on how you want to think about it. If you pick, for example, D equals 0 0.5, you would get 0 0.5 over one minus 0 0.5, which is also 0 0.5. This becomes one and these would be exactly equal. If you increase or decrease d, you're going to get an increasing value or a decreasing value. So this allows us to either buck or boost the voltage. But one important thing is that this average V out is already, we've already set the polarity here, so it's always going to be flipped. So this is a positive value, d is going to be a positive value, you're going to get a positive V out, but just remember that you have to take that value and flip it at the output here. All right, so that's the buck boost converter. And here's the basic topology. It has the two switching waveforms. And the important part is that the output voltage is, has a flipped polarity.